Hey everybody, here's a quick look at the art journal page we'll be making today. I'm working in my large dilutions art journal on a pre gessoed page, and I'm going to begin applying a few different colors of Dina Weekly Media and Art by Marlene paints onto my page very quickly and very loosely until I have the entire background covered. Now you can see here that I'm not overly blending anything. I want there to be paint strokes. I want there to be marks and have some movement within the paint, and then I will allow it to dry. Next, I'm going in with a Hero Arts leafy scroll stamp, and I'm covering that with Tim Holtz Distress Paint and a mini blending tool. And I'm actually going to twist and manipulate the stamp to create a border all the way around my page. So I've actually taken it off the stamp block, and then I'm able to move it around until I have a complete border. When I'm ready to clean all the paint off the stamp, I'm using my Ranger Ink Rub It Scrub It tool. By applying water all over the stamp, I'm able to rub it across this tool and it perfectly removes all paint from the stamp. And then I'm able to just use a towel and daub up the watery paint off the tool and set it aside to dry. To create the focal point of this page, I'm using a Studio Light Essentials stencil. And this particular layering stencil is going to create a dahlia flower. So I'm using four different colors of Distress ink and I'm starting with the very lightest color and the base of the flower and I'm going to just begin layering the ink through this stencil. So the first layer you can make it really really light or you can make it really really dark. It just depends what you want your final flower to look like. In this case I'm using a light coverage because I don't want there to, it to be really really bold. I want it to be sort of soft and whimsy sort of flowers. So after I play the base layer, I'm going in with my second lightest color and I'm going to line up this stencil and then apply the color through it once again using my blending tool. And I'm going to just keep doing this for all the different layers of the flower until I have the entire flower completed. You could very easily do the same exact layering stencil using paints or watercolors. I'm choosing to use inks just because they're very quick and easy to blend and I have the most colors available to me in these inks. So I'm going in now with the third layer and my mini blending tool once again and we're almost complete. I'm going to just finish this off with the very darkest color in the center of the flower and I will have my first flower finished. I'm doing these exact same techniques to create a few more flowers and also some leaves but instead of using another color of green for my second layer I'm going in with liquid pearls so that my leaves will have a little bit of shine and pearlescent dimension to them and create a little more interest. After everything is dry, I'm going to use this stencil directly onto my page now, and I'm going to begin tracing this, the stem of the flower with a white paint pen. And the reason why I'm doing this is it's going to help with placement one. And the second reason is that when I go in later to make my stems all green, I will have that nice layer of white that's going to help the green pop and be true to color. Where if I'd have went directly with the green onto my red page, it wouldn't have appeared green. It would have had a, a greenish, brownish quality and I would have had to do many, man, many layers to make it truly green. Then I'm going in with some of that neon pink and I've watered it down to create some splatters over the entire background. And when everything is dry, I can begin applying all of my flowers and stems and leaves that I've created earlier. I taken care when they were dry to cut them out with my Fiskar micro stimp scissors and now I'm gluing everything down with distressed collage medium. Distressed collage medium is my favorite glue to use whenever I'm doing paper piecing and I like to just use my finger and apply a little bit on the back of the paper but you could of course use a brush if you prefer. And after everything is in place I'm just using my fingers making sure everything's tacked down and then I'm going to let it dry 100%. After I was 100% sure all the glue is dry, I'm going in with a white signal pen to add some marks on a few of the leaves and also the petals of the flowers. And I'm doing this mostly because I just like to add pen marks. I like to see the hand of the artist. So I do this often in my work. And then to finish off the page, I'm using a chipboard sticker that says bloom and blossom. And with that, my page is complete. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you were inspired and got some ideas to use in your own artwork. If so, I would love to see them. So take a picture and post it on social media using hashtag art journal junction. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and also hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our mixed media and art journaling videos in the future.